Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. The Blue Network presents Philip H. Lord's Counter Spy. <laughs> A counter-spy is a United States undercover agent whose duty it is to smash the professional enemy spies operating in our midst. Imagine ace counter-spy of them all as David Harding. are the footsteps of Liza Gott as she walks along the narrow rocky path which runs on top of a high cliff looking out over the sea on the northern coast of Maine. <coughs> Forty-two years ago, Liza Gott married. Mark Gott, her husband, sailed away and was drowned. For 41 years, Liza Gott has kept a little kerosene lantern lit on her front porch. So just in case Mark should return, he'd see the lighted lantern from the sea and know she was waiting. <clears throat> well, well. <sighs> Liza Gott is nearing her little house on the top of the cliff where she stays alone. Liza sees something. Something on her front porch. She can see it by the light of the lantern. Hmm. That's funny. I didn't leave nothing on the front porch. It looks like a man. It is a man. What are you doing on my front porch? Oh. Wake up! Oh. I said, what you doing lying on my front porch? Oh, I, I was just lying here. I'm exhausted. I guess I fell asleep. You're a stranger. Yes. I've had a narrow escape. I landed here in a lifeboat. Saw your lantern lit, so I came up here. When I found nobody was in, I was too tired to go anywhere else. What happened to you? Uh, I was in a small Norwegian lumber schooner. There were five of us. Just off the horseshoe reefs, we were torpedoed. I got the lifeboat over alone. The others were killed in the blast. I was way after. I'd have been killed, too. One of those terrible German or Japanese submarines? Yes, it happened yesterday morning. I've been rowing for land ever since. Then I heard a bellboy. And about an hour later, I landed on the beach, down there. Hmm. You've had a terrible time, ain't uh, you? Could you give me a little food? Let me stay here tonight. Uh, come in. Uh, you've got to be took care of. Thank you. Uh, I'll have to light up a light. Shall I bring in the lantern? No, sir. That lantern stays there lit under all conditions. And it ain't never going out nor being took in. So long as I'm conscious... There. Now you can see. I'm sorry to trouble you. It ain't no trouble at all. Uh, may I inquire your name? Liza Gott. And it's got two T's and no E before the L. Liza, not Eliza. What's your name? Uh, Berkman. Frank Berkman. Mm. You look pretty tuckered. Here. Now just lie down here on this sofa and make yourself comfortable. Oh, I have been through a good deal. Well, now you, you stretch right out. 
Uh, put, put, put your head up here. Uh, and your feet down there. Now, are you quite sure you're comfortable? Oh, I never was more comfortable in my life. Well, that's good. There. Now you can rest in peace. Who do you want? Danny, this is Liza. Get me quick as you can, the counter-spy headquarters in Washington. And I want to speak to the head of it, no young Striplin. You go on, Daffy. Do as I tell you, Fanny. Get me the head of the counter-spies. Well, I still think you're Daffy, but I'll ring them. Fanny, ain't you got Washington yet? Yeah, we got counter-spy headquarters, but they're getting the head of it. I said it was a calamity. Hello, this is Harding speaking. This is Liza Gott, a Loganberry Point, Maine. I've caught me a spy. Uh, pardon me, uh, would you say that again? I'm Liza Gott, a Loganberry Point, Maine. And I've caught me a spy. Well, uh, naturally, I'm a little dumbfounded. Uh, where is he? Well, lying on the sofa over there. But if he hears you, why doesn't he get up? What? You ain't see the condition he's in. Is he unconscious? Very. And how do you know he's a spy? Well, he told me about Rowan alone. And hearing our bellboy at the Narrows. And then Rowan an hour and landing on our beach. Well, I was born here. And I know this coast. And there ain't nobody rowing from the bellboy at the reef to this shore on an ebb tide in one hour. He's a, a prevaricator. What is Loganbury Point near? Ain't near nothing. The nearest place is Stevenson. Well, well, that ain't near nothing either. Well, well, this is very unusual. But I'll leave my plane immediately and get to Loganbury Point somehow. <laughs> Very nice of you, Captain Stinson, to drive me over to Loganberry Point. The plane couldn't seem to find a nearer landing place. So? Uh, you don't suppose, do you, Captain, that the horse might trot a little? I'm not much worried about it. Uh, no. I mean, could you make her trot? No. Nope. I put her out to pasture when she was 22. She's been out there eight years now. I had to call her back into harness when the gas rationing went in. She has not troubled stand up. I say nothing to trot him. I see. Do you happen to know Eliza God over at Loganbury Point, Captain Simpson? Yep. Is she quite a responsible person? Salt of the earth. I just thought I'd visit her. You mean room there? Yes. You don't know Eliza. What do you mean? You'll find out when you get there. Come right in, Mr. Hardin. Thank you, Mrs. Gutt. I took a plane as far as Syverson and then had to drive over. Now, where is this man you captured? In the woodshed. Woodshed? That's where he is. No man but my past husband ever spent a night under this roof. And there ain't no man ever going to. Uh, uh, don't you want to put down your suitcase? Oh, no, no, thank you. I have some equipment in it. Oh. Now, you'll have to go the rest of the way yourself. He's right in there, laid out on a cord of wood. I ain't going into no woodshed with no two men. All right, Mrs. Gott. I'll go look. So 
sort of a worse for wear. Come on. Uh, yeah, come on. Uh, go away. Go away. Now, come on, sit up. Yeah, sit up. Oh. oh, it's you. Are you the man she'd been waiting for? Yes. Then get me out of here. If I had to pretend I was unconscious, or she'd have killed me. What do you mean? After she dragged me out here, she'd come out every hour. And if I was conscious, she'd hit me over the head with that piece of stove wood. Knock me out. Look at my head. I can't tell how much of you is your head and how much is bumps on top of your head. She'd hit me over the head just as cool and systematic as though she were a pile driver. Let me have your fingers. I want to take your prints. No. You'd better, or I might call Mrs. Gott back. Yeah, that's better. I'll telephone your prince to Washington, and we'll see who you really are. G6, Countess by Headquarters, Washington, reporting to Harding. The fingerprints you just telephoned in are prints of Dr. Slesson, who left San Francisco for Portugal 18 months ago. He was employed in the Stillwell plants while they were experimenting on cargo-carrying air transports. It looks like Dr. Slesson is the one we have been expecting the Gestapo to try and smuggle into the country. Come in. I'm glad to know it's Slesson that we've got. It's quite obvious Slesson has been sent in to secure all possible information on the newly contemplated cargo-carrying transport. This is a job the Gestapo probably allowed him about a week to complete. And then they must have made arrangements to get him out. I'll check with you later tonight. Well, Berkman or Slesson, you just heard that conversation. We know who you are and why you're here. I guess there isn't any sense to my denying. After all, the plant had to bump into that woman. You're going to talk? No. I see. Well, as the people of Logan Mary Point would say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> Martha, Martha, church bell's ringing. Something's up. Put it on your hat, Martha, the one with the yellow ribbon. The church bell's ringing, and it ain't go to meeting night. They must be calling it for something special. been called to the church here at the request of Mr. Harding concerning an important matter. <coughs> I'm proud to see every person of Loganbury Point present. <coughs> Mr. Harding of Washington. Citizens of Loganbury Point, I know you're all aware of the circumstances of the German spy who landed and was apprehended here. He means cough. Yeah. Now, our government knows why he was sent here. His mission would ordinarily take him a week. It is logical to expect he would be returned to Germany by the same route he arrived. Well, this part of the coast was selected because it's very sparsely populated. The Gestapo evidently believed landing here would be very simple. By all logic, I expect arrangements have been made by the submarines to pick him up at this very place within the week. Did you ever All of you men present are lobster fishermen, or go out hand landing and setting trot lines. You know the reefs and shoals like your own backyard. You can weave in and out of them on the blackest nights and in the thickest fogs. I'm calling for volunteers. Every night I want six fishermen to pretend that their motors have gone back on them and remain out there in their launches. Now, it's a dangerous undertaking. There's a chance you might be captured and even tortured for information. How many of you men 
are willing to volunteer. <clears throat> this is a sight I wish every American could see. Some of you are over 80. Some in your teens. And not a man in this church who isn't standing. We are breaking water, Herr Kapitän. Making the surface. Good. Machen Sie auf. It is very foggy and dark, Herr Kapitän. We are among the reefs. I suggest you come on deck. Aufpassen. Ich komme sofort. Bleiben Sie bei den Motoren. Get a hold of it. Get the ropes around it. What's going on? What is that? Throw me that rope. Oh, I will shoot. Then we surface. We came up right alongside that little fishing boat. There is a fisherman on it. Good. Bring him aboard. We will question him about these waters. Take him down to the control room. He looks like an old man. Get him below. Bring him aft. The captain wants him below decks in the control room. Blackout ship. Yeah, well, yeah, captain. Charge batteries. Hans Borkman will soon be here. He smells fish all over him. Get down there, you fish! Well, what are you doing out in your boat? Late at night in the fog. I was doing me a mess of fishing. My cussed motor broke down. So? Perhaps it didn't break down. Perhaps you're out here spying. You think they'd give me an important job like that? An old seaman over 70? See... With a wooden leg. Yeah, you're right. You are too old. What's your name? Stinson. Captain Egbert R. Stinson. So you're a captain. Captain of fish, perhaps. Well, if you understand, sir, for 50 years I was captain of sailing ships. And I never lost a one. Yeah? If you are so good, where are we right now? In the devil of a fog, if that'll help you. You know what I mean. What's our location? How far off Horseshoe Reef are we? You're a quarter mile northeast of it. You're lying. I know it. So you dare lie. I think we can take care of that. Mate, a hot iron from the galley. But I will get the wire for us, Dick. Well, I never see a room with so many gadgets in it before. We didn't need all these wires on a sailing ship. How far are we from the lighthouse? Lighthouse? Oh, let me see. As the crow flies, I think I'd say about a million miles. You talk. You will talk plenty. All right, I'll talk, you dirty vermin. The sea is clean. It's decent. Not a foul like the likes of you. Before you're through, you and this rotten hook will be at the bottom of the sea. But the fish won't trouble your carcasses. There isn't one foul enough to eat you. Curse you and all your foul kills. There. And there. Get there. on that fire axe. They kill you. Go ahead. Shoot. 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 Keep on shooting. Keep on. I'll have it all smashed before you can kill me. Shoot. There is one thing, Mr. Borden. Hold steady for it. Kill him. What is the matter? Shoot this crazy fool. Come nearer and I'll chop your head off. There. Uh... Oh. Look, idiot. Crazy fool. Six bullets to stop him. Have the chief engineer and electrician both cover the central control at once. Jawohl, Herr Kapitän. Chief engineer, electrician, report to the central control at once. Inspect, repair damage. Rig for hand control. To we see what that maniac has done to our automatic gear. Herr Kapitän, the master air started damaged. Impossible to say how long it will take to repair. Main periscope eyepiece also is broken. The depth indicator dial is completely wrecked, Herr Kapitän. How long will it take to repair? Two or three hours, Herr Kapitän. The compressed airline is breached. Several hours to repair. Also, main ballast hand valve jammed. For flukes, Uncle Mal. All this damage with the axe. Hello? The 
This is Elmer Greeley reporting from the lighthouse. Is that you, Mr. Harden? Yes. The submarine's out here. Good. Good. What are the facts? Well, Rick Gookins just landed. His boat was lying about a quarter of a mile from old Captain Stinson's. He heard the sub come up, and they evidently captured Captain Stinson and took him on board. Go on. Oh, uh, Red stuck around a few minutes, and he heard a lot of commotion, and then men trying to get the submarine to go down. But it sounded like it couldn't, like something had happened. So Red paddled his launch far enough away so they couldn't hear his motor, and then got to the lighthouse here. Fine, fine. I've got all the information I need right now. I want to hang up and then use this phone. Well, let's see. I turn this little crank here. Yes, ring it long and loud. Sometimes Penny, the operator, lays down and takes naps. Now, Miss Gott, would you run down the path and ring the church bell? Emergency. Yes, If the but... bell rings late at night, they know they're to bring what guns they have and rush for the wharf. Hello? Oh, operator, get me that number I wrote out for you yesterday. Please hurry, Mrs. Gott. Have that church bell rung. Oh, Revere said one if I land and two if I see. Naval control. This is Harding reporting. Relay to destroyer Smithville. Proceed at once one mile southeast of Sand Island Light. German submarine on surface. Immediately, sir. Relay to Coast Guard. Carry out plan three, if possible, and fog does not prevent. Otherwise, plan two. Immediately, sir. Include in Navy message. That because of present emergency, I'm going to try to get armed fishermen to submarine first. So if destroyer reaches submarine, watch for all clear signal, which will indicate presence of Americans on board. Yes, sir. Those of you with the slowest motorboat start out first. Here's Sandy's gun. Some men take it. I want all of you men to understand that this is an extraordinary situation. You're all volunteering on your own accord. They all want to go. Now, the reason we're taking things in our own hands is because it's so foggy the planes can't spot the sub. And it's too foggy for the destroyer to come in among these reefs until daybreak. Indications are that something's happened to that submarine, and it can't submerge. Would you say, Captain Lawson, that there was a very heavy swell out there near Horseshoe Ledge? Plenty heavy. After a three-day nor'easter, they've got a roll out there that's standing them on their heads. Well, that means the fire from the submarine will be very inaccurate. Now, when we sight her, you're all to fan out and make a circle around her. When you hear Captain Lawson blow his foghorn twice, head right for her. Start shooting and picking off the men, manning the guns. With 30 launches coming at her in all directions and the fog and the heavy roll of the sea, she'll have her hands full. We'll all board her at the same time from all sides of her. <laughs> Out. All right, men, your launches. Good luck. And remember, your women folks will be standing right here and await. That's her, Captain Lawson. A dark shape about two points to starboard. I am scum. Should I blow the foghorn twice? No. Twice is to attack her. Blow it once. So they'll fan out and approach her from all sides. Now slow the motor. Give the others time to get around her. I didn't realize how patriotic I'd be till I started thinking of them Burmans setting foot on our shore. I've never seen a thicker fog. She spotted us. Shall I head for her? No, she's only shooting at the sound of our motor. Who are you? Hands off of me, too. We won't reply. Let him stew. Who are you? Get ready, Captain Lawson, to blow your foghorn. Two blasts. <laughs> I ain't had so much fun since Liza's cow fell in the well. <laughs> All right. Found the signal. Take the wheel, will you, Mr. Harding? Let me do a little gunning. Go ahead. But the minute we touch her, jump aboard. Try to land at Loganbury Point, will they? The whole German crew's on deck. Captain Mulligan's alongside. Get that screw by the aft gun there! They're falling like ten pins, Hardy. Just order! Let your own boats go so others can come alongside. Man, straight in her, Hardy. I want to get out of here. Watch yourself now!
understand, Commander, as we stand here in the control room of your submarine, that you and all your crew are prisoners of the United States. Tja, das ist zu erwarten. Kriegsschon. I am helpless. And there at your feet, an old sea captain with 12 bullet holes. Evidently kicked in the face after he was dead. He was shopping at our controls with the fire axe. We had to shoot him. We shoot him six times before he fall. Captain Stinson was a neighbor of mine. What arm of the American forces have we been captured by? The fishermen of Loganberry Point. Mr. Hardy! Mr. Hardy! United States destroyer approaching out of the fog, sir! How in Sam Hill did a destroyer get in among these shoals on a night like this? <laughs> That's real navigating for you. What am I supposed to do now? You're expected to surrender your submarine and your crew and yourself to the greatest navy in all the world. Loganbury Point, return the earthly remains of one who has lived among us for so many years, Captain Stinson. If he had had a thousand lives, he would have chosen no other way to have given them all. And so we of Loganbury Point, not mournfully, but with pride in our hearts, say goodbye to a great American who lived as an American and died as one. God bless America, the land of the free. Countless by featuring David Harding is presented at the same time every Monday evening. that you tell your friends that you make a weekly date to gather around the radio at this time as America pays down to spy works to protect us from the spies of our enemies. Counter Spy is a Philip H. Lord production which has originated in New York. This is the Blue Network. WJZ New York, which brings you fun and excitement as you listen to the Sing for Doe program at 77 on your dial every Tuesday night at 8.30.